The Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union. This is where you belong. Over the years, we cared for you to help you meet your needs. We're trustworthy, dependable, so you can go financially. The Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union. This is where you belong. Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Crosstalk. Today we're here with um, the young Bashman Soka artist, Farmer Ubu. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Ubu. Yeah, great to be here, man. Now, I could start by asking you a number of questions, but truthfully, I want you to tell me, who is Farmer Ubu? Farmer Ubu is a young, energetic, focused artist mm. in Bashman Soka, looking to take things international. That's who Farmer Ubu is. Well, that's, that's, that's definitely nice. Um, but what's interesting to me is how a lot of you artists get into making music. Um, everybody has a different story. What's yours? My story, uh, well, music has been a part of my life since birth. I have grew up around uncles and my grandfather and whoever. They were all involved in music. I was in music from primary school in the choir. I used to play instruments and stuff. When they go into secondary school, then they, I started to discover dancehall music. And we used to do like some clashes on, on dancehall beats and stuff. So that's where my interest in music started. But it's only when I go into fifth form that I decided to do soca music. And that's where things started to get serious for me as an artist. So then it's fair to say that you as an artist, being a singer, making music during crop over, that's a serious career option for you? Yeah, definitely. Definitely a serious option for me. And I, I treat it very seriously. My craft, I focus a lot on making sure my product is different from other artists and I think I could, I could be doing this for the next 10, 15 years even. So you mentioned you used to be in the choir and then obviously you're into Bashman so you could know. Those are obviously different genres, as, yeah. as I would imagine. I, don't, I mean, you could tell me, but I don't think that you were in the choir singing Bashman Soka. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> exactly. So then my question to you is, do you see yourself transitioning into a different genre of music, even if it's like a different sub-genre of Soka, maybe like Sweet Soka, some party, something that could go for Party Monarch? Well, I tell people always that I am a Soka artist, but my focus is Bashman Soka, so I have done other subgenres of music before I have talking music, I have done sweet soca songs. I've done my actually my first soca song was a uh, one fifty, one sixty BPM song called School Boy Jack. So I could do the party and I could do the sweet too. But my focus right now is on the bashman. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, so it's obvious that Bashman Soka is just getting pop more and more popular as the years pass by. Um, this is the second year now we've had the um, Bashman Soka competition. But it's one thing to have the feedback from the public. But what do you, as a Bashman Soka artist yourself, what do you think about the genre? About the genre? Um, I believe that it is high time that Bashman Soka has been receiving like the respect that it deserves. It's been around for years, people just didn't notice it. And I'm happy that there's a competition now so that people can actually work on honing their craft and showcasing their talent on a, wide sp on a big stage, um, as opposed to trying to change what they're doing to fit into a sweet sofa competition or yeah. fit into a party monarch competition. So I believe the genre is receiving respect, I believe it's growing, and I'm really proud about where Bachelor Soka is right now and where it can be. Yeah. There are always naysayers in this thing. You will have maybe some older heads who would say, you know, Bashman Soka is not even a genre, it's, it's just too too wild, a bit too a bit too much. Mm -hmm. How would you respond to something like that? I would say that those persons are misguided or just ignorant because um, even, let me just talk about Raga Soka for example, what we call Sweet Soka mostly. When that first came about, people were very not receptive to it. But it takes time for people to get yeah, accustomed and then respect something. So because you're now calling it Bashment Soka, the, the word alone is a bit harsh. Bashment, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's where you will get that reaction from older persons. But to me, I feel like in the next couple of years, as the competition goes on and as persons start to take the genre more seriously, then I believe that it, it will get good reception from the older generation as well. Okay. Now, there are a lot of layers to you, it seems, for my <laughs> Um What a lot of people may or may not know is that you also study law. Yeah. Has that always been a passion of yourself? A little bit about that. 
law being a passion of mine, no. I, I, for most of my life, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. But when I was much younger, I wanted to be a doctor, and I wanted to be a teacher, and I wanted to be a pastor at one point. So when I got, when I finished um, sixth form at Harrison College, I was like, hmm, what am I going to do? I just did literature and stuff like that. Let me go and do law. And I actually developed a law for it, a love for it, sorry, while I was at KFL. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thinking about it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say right now, law is a passion for me. I can see myself ma making a big impact on Barbados, the Caribbean, even the world through law. But music is also a passion of mine. So the way how I see it, wherever my life takes me, I will follow. Okay, and I'm also of the understanding that you just finished your master's, you just specialized in um, maritime law. International maritime law, yes. International maritime law. And my first thought was, I don't know anyone that does that. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. Like, where did that interest come from? I mean, you're just, you're just different. So tell yeah. us. Okay, so I, I should mention that um, I, I came from a family of mariners as well. Uh, my father was a fisherman and my grandfather, my great-grandfather was a seafarer as well. My stepfather was a seafarer, so I, I guess it's natural for me to love the sea. I grew up near the sea, I used to go to the beach all the time. So that's another passion that I have. <laughs> so I just tried to find a way to, to mix everything, and then when I discovered that there is a thing called international maritime law, I was like, wow, this is something I should pursue. I read up about it, found a nice school, and here I am, a master's with distinction in international maritime law, I must say. So, which is great. <laughs> that's, that's, that's crazy. And I think if nothing else, that all you definitely showed us you can have many passions. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the big question, what everyone is wondering, how is Parman Pubu planning to merge music and law? Is he even planning to merge music and law? Well, I wouldn't say, I'm not going to merge them as such. I, I don't see that as a, a thing. I'm going to do my music. I'm going to do my law practice and be great at both of them. Simple as that. Okay, because I mean, there are people out there, I know, um, I can't remember any names off the top, but I know there are people who, for example, would specialize in like, entertainment yeah. law and things like that. So I don't know if that was a, a possibility for you. Mm -hmm. Obviously, some of your interests have not developed from the start, yeah. so it's just over time. So I don't know if that was going to be a possibility. Uh, actually, um, I, I did a course in intellectual property mm -hmm. law, and I was very good at the course. And obviously, being in the industry, I'm going to have to deal with stuff like contracts and stuff like that. But I don't think I would practice it for someone else, so we use it to benefit my career, so nobody can, you know, mess me up. Okay, so I really can't get over the fact that you have so many passions, and I just wonder, what would you tell the young people out there who might be saying that their passions are conflicting? You've obviously shown us that that's not the case, so what would you have to tell them? That is actually a good point, because I, I like to see myself as an example of sorts for, for young people that no matter where your what your background is, if you love something, just just pursue it. Because nobody would think it would be appropriate for somebody that went to Harrison College as doing a masters and what's not to be doing something like Bashment Soka because Bashment Soka is apparently something right. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what the perception is, but I love Bashment Soka and I wanna do it. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. And I also love law and I wanna make a career for that. So right. my advice is to follow your dreams and don't give up. Okay. All right, well, there you have it, guys. This has brought us to the end of season two of Crosstalk. We are so glad that you've been able to join us for our episodes this season. And who knows? We hope to see you again on season three. Peace. The Barbados Public Workers, Cooperative Credit Union. This is where you belong. Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union. This is where you belong. This is where you belong.